Hi, this is Evangeline Blair with Thrive Yoga and Wellness. <laughs> we are just getting set up here. We're about to begin class, and it's a level one beginner class. All righty. So once everybody gets onto their mats and gets settled, we will begin today in a child's pose. So for child's pose, we're going to come down the knees, keeping the toes, the big toes and the knees together, sinking those hips back towards the heels, and then bring the chest and belly down to the mat, stretch the arms out, extending out through those fingertips, let the forehead come down to the mat here. All right. So starting here. Let us begin by bringing our attention first to our breathing, taking note of it, observing it first, observing the quality here. And as you're here paying attention to your breath, if you're beginning to notice any sort of pinching behind the knees, you can always add a blanket. If you're at home, you can add a towel, just a small piece of cloth to take some of the pressure off behind the knees, same thing below the knees. If you're here and finding that the knees are really experiencing a lot of pressure and pain, add something soft beneath them here. Now coming into our ujjayi breathing, breathing in and out just through your nose, deeply, slowly, evenly. Relaxing the lower jaw. Letting the diaphragm do the work here. So your chest is going to remain relatively still as you inhale and exhale. But then the belly is going to fill up like a bubble every time you inhale. Now bringing our attention to our bandhas. That's the areas of the body that we want to lock up throughout the whole practice so that we protect everything and we're also going to feel a lot lighter with those abs pulled in. So let's start with those. Let us pull that belly button into our spine. We're not sucking it in like we do if we <laughs> want to try to look skinny all of a sudden. <laughs> we're not using the diaphragm to do it. We're actually engaging the ab muscles here. Inhaling, pulling those belly buttons into the spine. And then same with the pelvic floor, engaging that here. Sorry, just getting my groove on. Just starting out in child's pose. And again, to get a little bit more movement in here, let's come up just for a moment and cross your right knee over your left. And then sink back to a child's pose again. We're going to really open up the hips here. Remembering to keep the belly button pulled into the spine. Inhale, bring us back up onto both knees, centered, and then switch. Bring that left knee over the right and sink the hips back toward the heels. Let that forehead rest on the mat. Think about extending out through the underarm, through the fingertips. But try to keep the elbows or uh, excuse me, the shoulders in their joints. It's very easy to sort of just lunge those arms out, but instead we're thinking about keeping the shoulders back away from the ears and stretching the actual arm itself. Inhale, bring us back up to hands and knees. We're going to come to tabletop. So for tabletop, we're going to have our knees hips width apart and the knees directly below the hips. And with the wrists, we want them to be shoulders width apart and directly beneath our shoulders here. Let's do some cat cows to wake up the spine. So for cat cows, we're going to inhale, drop that chest and belly, raise the chin. 
on your exhale, follow this wave in the opposite direction. Round that upper back, gently tuck the chin into the chest as you exhale. Inhaling back into cow face, this is the pose where our face faces the ceiling. Exhaling back into our Halloween cat shape. On your inhale, coming back into cow face. And as always, as you begin to warm up, you can always add your own movements here, stretching the sides, maybe moving in figure eights, maybe even sinking the hips back toward the heels and coming back up, whatever helps wake up the spine here. Just making sure that we're protecting the wrist. Fingers are spread wide here. Most of our weight is toward our thumb and index finger. Pressing those fingers into the mat actively, engaging the arms. All right, let's come back into a neutral spine and find stillness for a moment. I want you to curl those toes under, plant them into the mat. We're going to come up into our first down dog with a practice. Inhale, send those hips up to the ceiling, tucking that chin in just slightly as we take our drishti or our gaze toward the belly button here. Because this is the first down dog of the practice, give yourself a little bit of time to warm up into this pose. So bending one knee and then the other, just alternating. Walking this out, helping the hamstrings to wake up here. We've still got our belly button, of course, pulled in tight. Same with the pelvic floor. Think about creating some space in between those shoulder blades. And think about trying to send your chest back toward your knees. All right, inhale, look in between those hands, exhale everything out, and just walk both feet in between your hands here, just coming into a forward fold. So here, if you're really feeling a lot of tightness in the hamstrings, you are welcome to leave a big, generous bend in those knees to create some space here. Let's come into ragdoll. We're gonna grab opposite elbows. Let the head hang heavy here. Maybe we just do gentle yes and no motions with the, the head. And you're also welcome to sway the torso side to side. And then thinking about actively pressing those feet into the mat, lifting the arches here. All right, releasing this, just coming into a forward fold. Let's do a half lift. We're just going to lift up halfway with a flat back, shoulders back, hands on the thighs or the shins. Exhale as you come forward. Inhale as we bring this all of the way up, rolling it up one vertebrae at a time, adding arms if you are able. And you bring those hands up and over. Exhaling, let those arms come down to the side here. All right, I'm going to create a little bit more movement so that we can begin to build heat here. So coming to the tops of our mats, we're going to bring the big toes together and the heels slightly apart. We're going to come into mountain pose here, thinking about stacking those hips over the feet, shoulders over the hips, and then the crown of the head over the shoulders. Shoulders are relaxed and away from the ears. Chest is open and proud. We're going to inhale, look up, reach up. Exhale, forward fold, bending from your waist. Inhale, halfway lift, long, straight, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, roll this all the way up. One vertebrae at a time. Let that head be the last person to the party. Exhale, arms come down to the side here. One more of those. Inhale, look up, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, stretching out from the hip bone all the way out to the crown of the head. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, roll this up. Bring those arms up and over. If you want to add a little back bend, you can. Just make sure you tuck the tailbone and then bend from the upper back. 
back. Sorry about those arms coming down to the side. All right. From here, we're going to start getting those thighs fired up. So we're going to inhale, look up, reach up. And I want you to think about sinking down here. Bend the knees. Send the bottom back as if there's a chair behind you. Actively squeezing the thighs together here. Lifting the arches of the feet, keeping those shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, forward fold. All right, from here, let us plant our hands on the mat. Step back into a plank pose here. Now we're going to do a chaturanga, which is like a yoga push-up. And some folks can do this from a full plank. I am not one of the lucky ones who can do that. So I will show you a modified version of that. But the main things I want you to think about are keeping the elbows facing the back of the room and grazing the sides of your rib cages. So as you come down, plant those knees if you need the modified version. Coming down chest and belly at the same time. Inhaling as we come into either up dog or cobra. We're going to plant those toes into the mat. Inhale those hips up to the ceiling, coming into a down dog. Taking the gaze to the belly button here. Inhale, look in between your hands. As you exhale everything out, bring that right foot forward in between the hands. Take your time getting set up here. If you need to shimmy that foot up in between your hands, go for it. <laughs> Rotate the left foot so that the toes are pointing toward the upper right hand, or excuse me, left hand part of the mat. Big bend in our right knee. We're going to come up with an inhale. Strong torso. Arms up and over. Pinkies rotated in. Think about tucking our tailbones in here. Actively lifting the left arch of the foot by pressing that pinky toe, the left foot, down into the mat. Think about squaring the hips to the front of the room. Open this up to a warrior two. So that left foot is now going to be parallel with the back of the mat. Your torso is going to be squared toward the wall that was to the left of you. And for us, it's the wall with the arm symbol. Palms are facing down here. The gaze is going over the right middle finger. Let's come into a peaceful warrior. Let's take that left hand down the thigh. Turn the palm up toward the ceiling. Reach back here. Now the left hand can just stay on that thigh if you'd like for it to. Or you can bend the left elbow. Bring it behind you. See if you can touch your right hip from behind. So here the gaze can go at the ceiling if you need a challenge. Or it can go down to the mat if you would like to feel more stable. Bring this back up to that warrior two. We're going to take this into an extended side angle. Send the hips to the back of the room. Plant your right arm on your right thigh. Bring that left arm up and over. Again, gaze can be at the floor for support or up the ceiling for a challenge. Now here we're thinking about creating a long straight line from our hip bone up through our underarm. So we don't want this curvy mountainous road. We want a really pretty slope or incline here. Inhale, bring this back up. Warrior two. Windmill those arms. Frame your right foot, planting your hands. Send all the toes back in the same direction. Stepping back to a plank, choosing either a high plank or low plank. Coming down, this is your chaturanga. Inhaling as we come up into either cobra or up dog. Curl those toes under. Inhale and send those hips up to the ceiling. Down dog. Taking your time to get set up here. Now inhale, look in between those hands. Exhale everything out. Bring the left foot forward. Take your time, even if you got to shimmy that foot up there. Rotate the right foot so that the toes are pointed to the upper right hand part of the mat. Big bend in that left knee. Come up with a strong torso. Arms up and over. Shoulders are relaxed and away from the ears. Pinkies rotated in.
really thinking about actively pressing the feet into the mat as though we are trying to tear the top and the bottom of our mats apart. It's going to engage so, so many muscles here. Open this up to warrior two. I want that right foot to be parallel with the back of the mat. The hip is now going to be squared toward the wall that would be to your right. For us, it's the green wall. Our gaze is going to go over our left middle finger here. Try to keep that knee from going in toward your big toe. Try to make it go more toward your pinky toe here. Right hand is going to go down the thigh. Left palm is going to face the ceiling. Let's dip it back. Right arm can hang out, or we can touch the back of that left hip with our right hand. Bring this back up to warrior two. We're going to take this into an extended side angle. Hips go to the back of the room. Left arm rests on the thigh. Right arm's going to come up and over. While we're all hitting, sitting here with our thighs burning, I'm also going to encourage you to try to stack that right shoulder over the left. Really open up the torso here. We don't want to be in a sort of a slumped C shape. We want to be get really open here. Inhale, bring this back out to that warrior two. Windmill those arms, plant your hands, firming your left foot, stepping back either to a high plank or a low plank. Belly button's pulled in tight. Thinking about looking forward as you come down. Inhaling into either cobra or up dog. Inhaling as we bring those feet down to the mat, hips up to the sky. Take a moment here to catch your breath in this down dog. So as you're catching your breath, think about your feet being hips width apart. Usually about two fists width apart. Yeah, a lot smaller than we think. <laughs> Think about spreading those fingers as wide as possible. Really press the fingertips down into the mat as if I'm going to come by and try to lift your finger and you don't want me to. Nice. All right, inhale, look in between those hands. Bring the right foot forward. We're going to do a warrior one on that right hand side. Thinking about your form here, don't rush it. Slowly open this up to warrior two. Left foot parallel with the back of the mat. Try to make sure that right knee is tracking toward the pinky toe, not toward the big toe. Nice. Let's come into an extended side angle. The hip goes to the left or the back of the room. Right thigh arm comes to the right thigh, left arm comes up and over. Get my right and left mixed up, y'all. Right, inhale, bring this back up to warrior two. All right, I want you to straighten that right leg. And then send the hips back to the back of the room, just like we did in an extended side angle. We're going to come into triangle here. We got lots of options. So we can begin to teapot the torso down toward our right. The right arm can come down and rest on the thigh, the shin, perhaps a block on the floor, whatever you've got at home, or maybe the hand comes all the way down to the mat. We're thinking about trying to keep our left shoulder stacked over our right shoulder here. about at that point where your hand is almost on the mat but not quite, press the back of your right hand against the side of your shin, your ankle, wherever it's at. All right, inhale, bring this back up. Nice. Windmill those arms, plant the hands, framing your right foot, stepping back, going through your vinyasa. High plank or a low plank, coming down to the mat. Nice. Thinking about coming down chest and belly at the same time, looking forward, that's going to help with that as well. 
It's also going to help prevent us from cinching our shoulders up to our ears here. Beautiful. Y'all have beautiful form today. <laughs> Love it. All right. Inhale, lick in between those hands. Exhale everything out. Bring that left foot forward. Take your time to get it set up. We're coming into a warrior one on that left hand side. Open this up to warrior two. I'll turn so that y'all can actually see me. So while we're in this warrior two, thinking about working on our heel to arch alignment here, if you're able. Now, if you ever feel unsteady in this pose, you can open this up. So kind of here we're on like a trapeze line here. But if you ever feel really super unsteady and you really feel like the abs are just not doing it for you, Open this up so that you're standing more on train tracks than you are on a trapeze. All right, straighten that left leg. Send the hips to the back of the room. T, pop the torso. Hand can come to the thigh, the shin, a block, whatever you've got at home. Maybe it's a soup can that you're putting your hand on. <laughs> Think about stacking that right shoulder over the left here. Gaze can go to the ceiling if you feel confident. If you're in that weird kind of in-between spot where your hand's not quite making it down to the mat, but it's really close to your foot, press the back of that hand into the side of your leg. Don't forget about lifting the arch of the right foot here. Don't let it go on vacation. Inhale, bring this back up to warrior two. Nice. <laughs> Windmill those arms. Plant the hands. Frame your left foot. Step back to a high plank or a low plank. Chaturanga down to the mat. Nice. Inhaling into either up dog or cobra. Cobra, we still have a slight bend in the elbows. Up dog, the arms are completely straight. Nice. Again, taking a moment to catch your breath here in your down dog. Taking that gaze to the belly button. It's going to help straighten out the neck here. Inhale, look in between those hands. Exhale everything out. Bring both feet in between your hands coming into this forward fold. Ooh, beautiful jump forward. That was lovely. All right. On our inhale, we're going to bend our knees and send our bottoms back coming into a chair pose. So in chair pose, we are actively pressing the thighs together. We're being quite careful about not sticking our booties out here. We want that tailbone long and straight and pointing down toward the floor. All right, bring the palms together. Bring the thumbs to your sternum. Now, we're going to try to twist this. We're going to try to get our left arm to the outside of our right thigh. Take a minute here. Try to get that underarm almost all the way onto the thigh. Now, if you're looking at that thinking, yeah, right, <laughs> that's not going to happen. That's OK. There's always an alternative. We can instead just gently twist the body toward our right and just open the arms. All right, come into a forward fold. Let all that lactic acid come out. Woo! Walk it out if you need to. <sighs> Pull those belly buttons in. It's going to make you feel lighter here. <laughs> You're like, yeah, right. <laughs> That's not going to make me feel lighter. <laughs> all right, inhale. Bring this up into a chair. Bend those knees. Sink the bottom back. Think about tucking that tailbone in. We're tucking it by using our lower abs here. We're not forcing it. We're using those muscles to pull it in. Palms come together. Thumbs come to the sternum. Right arm, left thigh. As you're doing this, take a peek down at those knees. Make sure that they're still lined up here. If they're not, that means the hips have twisted. Now again, if you're looking at that thinking that I'm crazy, your alternative is to just twist the torso with the arms open. Exhale, forward fold. <laughs> Let that all out. I think that room, the room is going to register a Richter scale there because we are all 
shimmying and shaking into that, <laughs> including our teacher. Nice. Shake it out. Catch your breath. <sighs> all right. Let's inhale. Roll this all the way up. You can bring the arms up if you'd like. You don't have to. Exhale. Arms to the side. Let's take our left foot. Step it back a big, super big step. Keep all those toes facing in the same direction here. We're going to create a big bend in our right knee. The toes of the left foot are planted firmly on the mat, but the heel is lifted up here. We're coming into a crescent lunge. As always, tailbone tucked in, arms up and over, pinkies rotated in. It's your crescent lunge. If you want to stay here, you can. If you want more twisting, bring those palms together. Bring the thumbs to the sternum. Same thing as our twist that we did in chair. We're going to come forward, try to get the outside of that um, left arm to the outside of the right thigh. You can always do the same pose here. Your modification, though, would be opening up the arms. All right, bring this back to a crescent lunge. And then just step forward, meeting you at the tops of your mats. Very nice. Beautiful ujjayi breathing going on in the classroom. So if you're at home, you cannot hear this beautiful ocean wave of breaths, but it's awesome. It's very encouraging here. All right. So from our mountain pose here, let's step our right foot, big step back. Toes are planted into the mat, but the right heel is lifted up. Arms come up and over, pinkies rotated in. Think about really engaging that right thigh. Pretend like somebody's going to try to push you down. You don't want them to push you down. If you would like to twist, you can. Palms come together. Thumbs come to the sternum. Right arm, left thigh. If that's too much, just bring the arms to the side. Still getting the benefits of a twist here. All right, coming back into that crescent lunge. And then just step it up to a forward fold. Woo, nice. <laughs> oh, you doing okay? Good? <laughs> all right. All right. So let's all take our, what angle are you at? Take your left foot, do a big step to the back of the mat. Woo, yeah. <laughs> we are in this very wide leg stance here. So on our toes, pointed toward the front, but slightly turn outward. Just slightly, slightly. Yeah, perfect. All right, let's come into a five point of star. Bring those arms up straight, stretching out through the underarms, through the fingertips here, like we're celebrating. Because we're so happy to be here, right? Sweating. <laughs> let's bring this into a lovely squat. Bring those arms down as if you're a cacti or cactus. Then those knees. Yeah. Thinking about sinking down but tucking the tailbone here. I don't want to see the bottom sticking out. I want it to be tucked in. All right. Straighten this back out. Nice. All right. Bring those arms down behind you. Interlace the fingers behind you. Try really hard to not lock the joints out here because it's very easy to sort of like, woo, <laughs> cinch yourself up. But we're just, we're just crafting the fingers. Inhale, pull that belly button into the spine. As you exhale, fold forward from the hip. Let the arms just follow behind you. See what happens. Now, if this is too deep of a pose or too deep of a bend, bend those knees. Give the hamstrings some extra space here. Really keep that belly button pulled in tight. Ujjayi breathing in and out through the nose.
front, release the hands. Let them come down to the mat for support here. Let's do some skandasanas. Those are just side lunges, helps get the insides of the thighs opened up. So we're going to use our hands for support here, and we're gonna bring most of our weight into our right foot. And if you want to, you can keep the toes flexed here, or you can point them and see what it feels like. See the difference, kind of play with that. Whenever you are ready, taking the weight into your left foot, maybe keep the feet flexed, maybe point them and see what that feels like. Being careful if you point the toe here, sometimes that can cause a cramp in the and the uh, calf muscles, so just be careful with that. Just moving intuitively here, side to side, maybe hanging out someplace where it maybe feels like it needs some extra love. You can also match this up with your breathing if you'd like. Exhaling as you come to one side, inhaling as you come through center, exhaling as you make it to the other side. All right, so from my skandasanas, let's just come back into that wide leg forward fold, keeping those hands on the mat for support for a moment here. Now I want you to take your peace fingers, that's your two fingers, and wrap them around your big toes. Stick those arms out to the side, the elbows out to the side, showing off your big guns here. Pulling down gently. Let the head hang heavy. We're using the fingers and the toes together. The big toe is pressing down into the mat and the fingers are pulling up. You should be feeling this in your hamstrings. Release those hands, let them come down to the mat for support. All right, let's heel toe everything back together so that we're just in a forward fold here. Nice. Inhale, slowly roll this up. We're just coming up to a standing pose. <laughs> Woo, I see a lot of sweaty faces, <laughs> including my own. <laughs> That's a good sign. Let's cool it down just a little bit. We can work on some balances from here. We're still gonna be moving, but it'll give us a chance to catch our breaths and cool down a little bit. So, balances. For me, the, the main things um, may be having to come off of your mat, especially if you've got a really squishy mat. Um, a wall is always gonna be your friend wherever you are. If you're trying to balance, especially if you're kinda new to it, having a wall behind you, sometimes just even knowing that it's there is enough to give you that confidence. All right, and then also having a focal point in front of you. So usually something about one to three feet in front of you that is not moving. Let us just start with tree, just to get our heads wrapped around balancing it first. So we're gonna first begin by grounding our left foot into the mat. And I like to do that by putting some of the weight into my left foot and then lifting up the toes of my left foot. What I notice is that my arch lifts and I can feel all four corners of my foot pressing down into the mat. I maintain that feeling and then allow the toes to come back down. I'm always gonna keep a micro bend in that knee that I'm gonna be putting weight on because we don't wanna get osteoarthritis, right? All right, hands can come to the <laughs> hips here. Let the right foot come to your side, toes on the mat. This is kickstand kind of level one with tree. Level two would be bringing the bottom of your foot to the outside of your left thigh, or not thigh, excuse me, shin. If you wanna keep going up, we're gonna totally skip over the knee because it bends one way. And then we will bring the bottom of the foot to the inside of the left thigh, hopefully. If you're here and you're noticing that that right foot's trying to sneak away from you and slide down, <laughs> Try pressing the right foot more into your thigh. Nice. Anybody who's feeling extra squirrely today, if you're able to bring up your heel all the way to your belly button, you can come into a half lotus. Once you have decided where you feel good at, which version of tree you would like to do today, let those branches, that's your arms, 
do whatever they would like to do. So if this is something that you like to practice or work on, maybe when you're at home, maybe try closing your eyes one time and see what happens. See if you can still maintain that balance. All right, let that right leg go with some control. <laughs> Shake it out, do the Elvis if you need to. It's not an official yoga move. <laughs> This is what we decided to call it. Helps get that lactic acid out. All right, let's even things out on the other side. Grounding our right foot into our mat. Getting that arch lifted and all four corners pressed into the mat. Hands can come to the hips. Your options are kickstand. Side of the shin. Inside of the right thigh. And a folk for your extra bendy. If you can bring that heel all the way up to the belly button, then you can do your yoga. Let your branches do whatever they want to do. Remembering that even though we're not bending and moving and folding around, we still got that belly button pulled in super tight here. Like I said, that's going to be what helps you feel a lot lighter and a lot more established. All right, let's release that left leg with some control. Shake it out. All right, one more little balance here. It's just such a, it's not only a physical workout, it's a mental workout to do balances. So it's a nice holistic way of looking at yoga. All right, so we're going to come into warrior three. And to do that, we are going to, again, ground that left foot down into the mat. And I want you to flex your right foot and shoot it behind you gently. Try your best to keep the hips parallel with the mat. So I don't want any twisting here. I want you to think about trying to keep the hip bones parallel to the mat. Really strong right leg. We're really engaging those muscles. We're not going to collapse into the ligaments of our left leg here. We're going to actively press that left foot in. So if you're an airplane, bring those arms out to the side. If you're a warrior, bring those arms out in front. All right, release this. Bring that right foot to meet the left. Shake it out if you need it. Let's balance it out on the other side. Ground the right foot into the mat, lifting the arch, pressing the four corners of the foot into the mat. Really flex that left foot. Shoot it behind you gently. Hips parallel to the floor beneath you. Thinking about keeping the heel facing the back of the room. Bring your arms out to the side if you're an airplane. If you feel like a warrior, bring those arms out to the front. Really pressing that right foot into the mat. Big toe pressing. Bring that left foot to meet the right with some control. Very nice, everybody. That looked really good. <laughs> Alrighty, so coming back down onto our mats, we're going to slowly work our way down onto our bellies. And if you want to just transition, you can inhale, look up, reach up. Exhale, just bring those hands down to the mat. So we're going to come into locust pose. To do that, like I said, we're going to bring the whole body down to the mat. And you're going to keep your foreheads down on the mat. I'm going to keep my face up so that y'all can actually hear me. And I want us to begin with our hands to our sides here. And we're going to leave the palms down at first. And I want us to play around with this so that you can feel the little subtle differences between between each hand position. All right, so of course we got the belly button pulled in. Pelvic floor is also contracted. But then let's think about gently pressing the pelvic bone into the mat. We're not really smashing it into the mat and engaging the glutes here. We're just gently tucking that tailbone in, just like we do when we're in warrior one and warrior two. All right, so on your inhale, lift your chin and shoulders off of the mat. When you're ready, add the arms. And when you're ready again, add those legs. And 
maintaining your breathing here. Exhale, let everything come down. You can stack up your hands beneath you and rest your forehead on your palms. Bend the knees and send the soles of the feet up to the ceiling. Windshield wiper, the legs left to right. Just sway them back and forth. All right, coming back to stillness. Let's bring the arms back out to our sides, foreheads down to the mat. This time, leave the palms facing up toward the ceiling. Nice. On your inhale, lift those chins, lift your chests, add arms when you're ready, add legs when you're ready. For the folks who are actually here in the classroom, we have a little bit of music going in the background, and it's actually the music from our wedding reception. <laughs> but it's so perfect. <laughs> all right, exhale, let this all down. Create that little pillow beneath your forehead. Bend those knees, send the soles of the feet up to the ceiling. Windshield wiper those legs back and forth. All right. Coming back to stillness, this time we're going to send our arms out in front of us, Superman style, palms facing each other. We're going to do the same thing that we do with all the other. We're going to inhale, lift the chin. This time we're going to have to add the arms at the same time as the shoulders. Add legs whenever you're ready. This one you may find is your most challenging one. Really engages muscles that we just kind of don't use in this way on a normal basis. Exhale, let all this down. Whew, create that little pillow. Windshield wipe for those legs. All right, coming back to stillness. Let us slowly work our way up to a plank pose. So to do that, you can press those hands into the mat next to your chest and then push yourself up. We're going to come into a side plank from our plank, um, and I will begin with a full plank and a full side plank um, to let you see what it looks like. Now, if you look at that and you think, mm, yeah, right, that's not going to happen, that's okay. I will show you a modified version next. So for our first side plank, we're going to come up into a plank, remembering to not let the hips dip or for the hips to go way up to the ceiling into a down dog. We just want a long, straight line of energy here. We're going to think about keeping that right wrist beneath our shoulder and then sending the weight into that right hand. Maybe we take the left arm up to the ceiling. Maybe we stack the feet. Maybe we have them next to each other. Again, if you are not feeling that, drop down to a little half plank. Keeping that right knee down on the mat, still keeping that right wrist beneath the shoulder here. Maybe if you feel confident, send that left arm up. If even that is too much, you can drop down to your forearm, keeping the elbow stacked beneath you. That will take a lot of pressure off of the wrist there. All right, bring this down <laughs> to a plank. In the classroom, y'all had held that for like nine hours because <laughs> I was doing the whole explanation. So sink back to a child's pose. Let the hips come back to the heels, extend those arms out. Me and yoga teacher made you hold that for a long time. <laughs> if you'd like here, you can gently roll the wrists, going in one direction first and then the opposite way next. We want to be very kind to our wrists. All right, before we lose that heat, bring it back up. Now that you know where you want to be, you can either start in your high plank or in your low plank. Get everything lined up, the wrist beneath the shoulder, and then come into your side plank. While you're here, the, same, the rules are the same. Try not to let that hip dip. Try not to send it up to the ceiling. Long, straight line of energy here. All right, friends, bring this back to a plank. 
and then sink it back to the child's pose. Breathe, catch your breath. Roll those wrists gently. And in just a moment, we'll transition to the boat pose because none of my yoga classes are complete without a boat pose. <laughs> All right, so bring this up into a tabletop and then find your way to a seated pose or at least come down to your bottoms here. So for boat pose, we are getting the heels of our pelvic bones grounded into the mat, even if it means that we need to move some junk out of the trunk. That's absolutely okay. We are thinking about keeping that chest open and proud, the knees knitted together here. We're going to put our arms out as if we're going to grab something or hold something. So level one with boat is to just lift one foot at a time and alternate between the two. Level two would be being bringing both feet up off of the mat. Try our best to not compensate here by rounding the back. We want to try to keep it straight. Level three would be shooting those legs out straight. I'm not quite there yet, so we won't be there yet. Just like with any other pose, shoulders are away from the ears. All right, exhale, let this down. I like to plant my hands behind me and sway my knees side to side, but some folks do like to squeeze those knees into the chest, and that's absolutely okay as well. Whatever feels good to your body, as long as you're mindful. I always say, as long as you're not flopping around like a fish out of water, that makes me happy. We got two more boat poses after this. All right, coming back to stillness. Chest open and proud, arms out like we're going to hold something. Inhale, lift the feet up, whatever your level is. Y'all know me, my regulars, I love to add that twist. So I like to turn to my side, open my arms, turn to the opposite side, open my arms. You're always welcome to do Russian twists here where you're pretending as if you are holding a ball, but I find that my form kind of falls apart when I move that quickly. So I just like this little slow twist here. All right, release this. Whatever feels good, windshield wiper those knees or squeeze them into the chest. I like the knees all the way down. I've got my, let me see if I can do it. There we go. So we'll bring it out to a canoe. And then we're going to weeble wobble and shake it back up to a boat pose. <laughs> Y'all are strong. Y'all have done a lot of these. <laughs> all right, release this. Oh, windshield wiper those legs side to side or squeeze them into the chest. Whew, all right. Let's start on some cool down stretches here. So coming to stillness. And that is a really great, the way that, it's, it's interesting. Sometimes I'll see my students move very intuitively and I'm like, that's a great stretch. Let's do that. <laughs> so let's actually start with a little bit of a Marichi here. Let's sting, send that left leg straight out in front of you. You're going to keep the left toes flexed. We're going to bend our right knee, bring that right foot back as much as we can. And we're going to take a fist, and we're going to plant it in between our hand and our leg. Nice. I want you to inhale, really pull that belly button into the spine. And then exhale, coming forward. Thinking about trying to keep a flat back here and bending forward from your hip. So eventually we'll get you set up for a bind. But right now we're just using it as a cool down stretch. Inhale, roll this up. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Extend the right out leg in front of you, really flex that right foot, bend the left knee, plant the left foot, put a fist in between your foot and your leg, and then pull the belly button into the spine, inhale, and as you exhale, coming forward. Mm. 
let the head hang here. And if you're not able to get the hands behind the feet, you can always keep those hands planted on the mat beside you for support here. I know that I have some very tight hamstrings. The floor is always my friend for that, preventing me from going too far. Inhale, bring this up one vertebra at a time, slowly, lovely. All right, folks, so do I have anybody in here who has any knee issues, like knee replacement, knee surgery, anything like that? All right, let us do a half hero's pose here. I'm just really gonna stretch out those quads. I feel like we're gonna need that today after all those warrior ones and twos. <laughs> so for this one, we are going to gently bend our right knee, and we're going to bring our calf and our foot to the outside of our right thigh. So the difference here is we could just sit down on our knees, but that's kind of like, it's almost like the elementary school assembly pose. We don't wanna be doing that. We instead want to think about having that calf outside and flush to the sides of our thighs. Now we are just gonna be doing it one leg at a time. So I don't want y'all to go too far into this. We're not sitting on top of the shin, the shin is beside us. If you're at home and maybe trying to do a full version of it like I'm doing, just make sure that you have the sit bones grounded into the mat here and you have the knees knitted together. And hopefully you're noticing a big stretch. If you're not, if you're one of my people who really needs more, begin to come on back, maybe come back to the forearms, maybe come all the way flat to your mat. And you can also do this in the half hero's pose as well. Just make sure that as you come back, you keep those knees knitted together. All right, coming up, if you've leaned back, gently switching legs, taking your time to get it set up here. We're bending that left knee this time. Remember to bring it to the outside of your left thigh making your shin flush with the outside of your left thigh. Still getting those heels of the pelvic bones grounded into the mat, keeping the knees knitted together. Right foot is flexed. Making sure that the calf and thigh of the right leg are gently pressing into your mats. And then always melt this backward if you need more of a stretch here. You can always come down flat. Let me stay up so I can see y'all. Right, bring yourself back up if you've leaned back and gently just extend both legs out. Nice. Now we're gonna come in for cobblers. For this pose, we let the soles of the feet touch each other. And we don't have to worry about the heels being completely tucked into our pelvic bone here. We wanna give them some space. You can even have a good foot or even two feet in between here. Um, if you are noticing that this pose is really yarding and pulling on the inside of the hips here and the inside of the thighs, always have the option of adding support, blocks, blankets, whatever you got at home, anything that will help hold those knees up and protect the hips here. Now bringing our attention to our feet, we wanna see if we can open up the soles of the feet, almost like it's the pages of a book. Yeah. All right, thinking about standing up tall, chest open and proud. Inhale, pull that belly button into the spine. Hands can be on the mat beside you or if you're able to come forward a little bit more with a flat back, you can bring those hands to the mat. If you really wanna get the hips super open here, we can gently wrap those hands around the feet and press our forearms into our shins here so that we're using our arms to open up the hips more. Inhale, 
Okay, this up. So from here, let us come to our backs on our mat. We're going to come in for a reclining twist. So for this, we will come all the way down flat. We're going to bend our knees and plant the soles of our feet into the mat. We want those feet about hips width apart. You're going to send out your arms as if you're trying to make yourself look like a giant T. So they're going to be out to your sides. You're going to just naturally let those legs or the knees fall away from you toward your right. You're going to notice that left hip come up, up, up off of the mat. And that's kind of what we want here. We want a little supine twist here. If you're able, take your gaze over your left shoulder. You're really completing a deep twist here. Trying your best to keep your left shoulder down on the mat. If this is too deep of a stretch, if you're really noticing it pulling on the outside of the left hip here, as always, we can add support on the outside of the right knee and or in between the knees. Now for my folks who are extra bendy and twisty, you can get more out of this pose by planting your right ankle on top of your left thigh. That's really gonna add, so basically your right leg is putting pressure on your left thigh adding some weight to it, so you bend more deeply. And for those at home who maybe can't see quite as well, if I were to bring my knees back up to center, my legs would be crossed the way that gentlemen cross their legs, but then I would just allow the knees to fall to the right, keeping that same position. And helping those knees back up to center. Let the gaze go back up to the ceiling. And then we're going to do this in the opposite direction. We're going to allow the knees to fall toward our left, adding support where it is needed, taking our gaze over our right shoulder. For those who need more, plant your left ankle on top of your right thigh. Still maintaining ujjayi breathing here, slow, steady, in and out through the nose. Okay, inhale, let those knees come back up to center. I want everybody to come into a happy baby from here. Happy baby is our pose where we bend our knees. We send the soles of our feet up to the ceiling. We're going to grab our feet from the outside pinky toe side. We're going to try our best to keep our tailbones down on the mat. We want those legs to open up wider than our torso. We are gently pulling the feet down toward the mat, almost as if you're trying to get your knees into your underarms. If it's available, you can sway side to side here, maybe seeing if you can get each knee to touch the mat as you sway. Now, if this is really crunchy and painful on the spine, one thing you can do is to add an extra mat or a thick blanket beneath you. If that's not an option, then just remain still here. Don't crunch the spine on a hardwood floor. From here, let's release those legs down to the mat. And now we can come into Shavasana. So this is our final resting pose. We can do a traditional Shavasana where we have our feet as wide as our mat, if not wider, and just let those toes happily just hang out toward the sides. We're gonna bring, bring our back flat to the mat arms are going to be out beside you. Maybe think about shimmying the shoulder blades a little closer together beneath you. Let the palms face up toward the ceiling. But I also encourage you to add as many props or items that you would like to make yourself more comfortable here, perhaps with the 
um, it's kind of gay where your low back is really hurting. And if that's the case, you can add a bolster or a pillow beneath your knees or behind your knees. Neck rolls are always good for adding behind the head. Now that we're here in our Shavasana, we can now let go of the control over our breathing. We're just going to let the breath shut down. Begin a full body scan here. And what do we mean by scan? What I mean is I want you to bring your attention to each body part. Starting with your toes, slowly moving up toward the crown of your head. And as you're paying attention to each body part, I want you to take note of the sensations that you're experiencing. the temperature, where you're holding your weight up, where you're bearing weight up. Maybe you notice discomfort. Whatever it might be. And remember, you don't have to label anything as good or bad. It just is. On your second full body scan, again, starting at the feet, slowly moving to the crown of the head. As we bring attention to each body part, allow those body parts to soften and feel heavy. Know that the floor beneath you and the props that you are using are totally supporting you and you can completely let go. find that your mind is trying to keep you busy or trying to entertain you while you're here, I encourage you to acknowledge those thoughts, but don't crush them. We know that they're there, but they don't need our attention right now. Slowly begin to bring back your awareness. Begin to awaken the body by wiggling your fingers and your toes. Drawing circles with our wrists and ankles. Maybe even taking a full body stretch here. Really bend those knees and hug them in to your chest. And 
however you are ready, rolling onto one side, taking some sighs or deep breaths while you're here. Begin to slowly push yourself up, eyes can be closed or they can just be downcast. Thank you all so much for joining and practicing with me today. It is always such a delight to be here with you. And thank you so much for letting me be part of your self-care routine. Namaste.